So why was it buried? What was going on? This brings us to the end of the last ice age. And there was a cold snap. The ice age was beginning to warm up. It was beginning to warm up. You can see on this chart, uh, which is uh, uh, not to scale, it's a logarithmic chart, basically a, a crude logarithmic chart from a environmental science textbooks I'm, I'm a co-author on. And you can see on the far left, it was very cold. It started to warm up, but then there's a cold snap, and that cold snap is known as the Younger Dryas. You've heard about that, I'm sure. And that cold snap, by my dating, when I say my dating, standard geological dating now, although you'll hear other dates a century or two off, um, is about 10,900 BC to 9,700 BCE. So that's a cold snap at the end of the last ice age. I'm not going to talk today about the beginning of the Younger Dryas, although I do think that was caused by a solar event, and I can explain that to people if they want to hear more about that uh, at a different time. But what I want to focus on is that the very end of the Younger Dryas, 9700 BC, that's where you see the steep curve bringing temperatures up to modern times. Um, so does everyone see that on the left side? Up to modern times, and that was a dramatic event, something I've been in interested in for literally 50 years. I hate to date myself, because it goes back to when I was a college student and a graduate student, and back in the bad old days, we thought that the Ice Age ended very, very suddenly. But what did we call suddenly? We thought, oh, maybe the Ice Age ended in several centuries, you know, 300, 400 years. Then in 2008, and don't try to read all this, I'm just showing you it's real. Uh, 2008, a paper came out that suggested the radical view that the Ice Age ended in just a few years, maybe three years, maybe five years, something like that, based on Greenland ice cores. And then this paper came out, um, and other papers have uh, uh, backed it up since, that no, the end of the last ice age literally happened in a very, very short period. What you're looking at from the right to the left, read it to the right to the left, is the last three years of the Younger Dryas, that's those tick marks at the top, or those gray uh, boxes at the top mark the beginning of years. So the last three years of the Ice Age, and then the first year of what's known as the Holocene or post-Ice Age, and that big dark black bar, do you see that vertical black bar? That marks the end of the last Ice Age. So it's just a fraction of a year, literally as far as we can determine within, say, a two-week period. But what that means is it actually could have been overnight, which I think is essentially what happened. And what would you have? How do you cause an Ice Age to end overnight? Um, literally... That's what we're talking about. So again, to review what I just said, you've got this cold snap known as the Younger Dryas that begins at 10,900 BCE. You then have the final incredibly sudden warming, literally within a few weeks, but probably overnight. At 9,700 BCE, what could cause this? Um, those who have heard me speak before and know my work, know that I came to the conclusion about 15 years ago as a working hypothesis, and more and more data has now come to support that I'm happy to say that what caused the end of the last ice age was our sun, a major solar outburst. The sun is not always quiet. It's a star and there are other solar-like stars that we now know about astrophysically, and a lot of this work is only in the last, literally last decade or more, even more recently, sun-like stars tend to be unstable. Uh, we have um, been blessed as a civilization for a few thousand years having a relatively stable quiescent sun. But that's not the way the sun is geologically over time. Um, sometimes the sun undergoes major solar eruptions, um, ejects what's known as plasma. Plasma is basically electrically charged particles, mostly protons and electrons, but other charged particles too, moving 
from when it's ejected by the sun at incredibly fast speeds, more or less a good percentage of the speed of light in some cases. And these outbursts, if they hit Earth, and they have hit the Earth, can cause massive destruction on the surface of the Earth. They can melt glaciers virtually instantaneously. Um, they can end an ice age, and that's exactly what we've seen. They will, when they melt glaciers, I just want to mention this now, or they hit water, they put incredible amounts of moisture into the atmosphere. The atmosphere can only hold so much moisture, otherwise it comes down as what? Rain, huge torrential rains. Are there stories throughout the world in ancient times of huge torrential rains and flooding? Yes. And this all ties together. So we have all this data, especially from Greenland ice cores, from sediment cores, etc., that indicate the sun was very active. It underwent a solar outburst, and that's what ended the last ice age. Nowadays, we have what's known as the solar wind. And do we sometimes have what are known as coronal mass ejections, little outbursts from the sun? And does it sometimes cause problems like causing satellites to fail, et cetera, et cetera, or knock out grid systems temporarily, or maybe interfere with traffic control at, radio, um, at uh, airports? Yes, yes, yes. But that's nothing compared to what happened in the past. Um, but mostly what we see are, um, you know, pretty plasma effects like the aurora borealis, the northern lights, the southern lights, that type of thing.